Welcome to Break the Record podcast. I am your host, Anna Turnen. This podcast was created to help facilitate positive change in the music industry through real stories from the most inspirational people in music. By tuning in, you'll receive actionable tips on how to improve your creativity, health, and quality of life. All views expressed in this podcast are my personal views. Eiko Pakkanen is a music industry veteran in the Finnish music export and artist development scene. He founded the legendary heavy metal label Spine Farm before selling it to Universal, was involved in the early days of bands like Nightwish, Children of Bodom, Blind Channel, and he's in the board of Music Export Finland. In this episode, we dive into some of the pros and cons of developing an artist in a smaller market and how to approach exporting those artists, how to keep it real in the biz, and what's the current state of rock and metal music right now, as well as so much more. So let's fucking go. Please go back and then. This is like the first time in Break, Break the Record podcast where I've been able to say R, like I usually say it in Finnish, so it's Riku. Just so everyone's aware, you can practice your rolling R's uh, whilst listening to this podcast. Um, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so you have probably one of the vastest um, backgrounds when it comes to working in music in Finland. Like you've had a crazy background. You've been there. Uh, during the rise of all of the bigs and I, I say it like it sounds massive like in honesty there's only like a handful of bands who have re- really ever made it out of Finland but you've been with all of them pretty much and you also started the legendary metal label Spine Farm which is obviously now and a universal imprint and you still work very much in the industry but I would love to hear in your own words how your career has come about what you're up to these days and uh, If we can jump in right there. Yeah, I started uh, Spine Pharma more than 30 years ago, uh, just like uh, as a hobby. I think uh, I drifted into the business. I don't. I, I, to me, at that time, felt like uh, getting into the business and getting it as a job was like uh, it was a, a, a way too big a dream. So I, I didn't even dream about it. It was just a, it was just a hobby, and uh, and uh, then it became a job after a few years so but i i i never thought that it, it that would happen so but i was so uh, lucky being in the right places at right times and uh, making some right choices like uh, at, the, at the time when, when when metal stuff was like getting bigger in finland we had obviously mm-hmm. some some stuff like hanoi rocks or uh, stone we had some bands in the 80s that really didn't make uh, internationally but they they showed uh, maybe way for the next generation uh, mm. and uh, and there at that time in the 90s uh, for for reason or other nobody else wanted to do those bands here and uh, and uh, little by little we got uh, um, recognized and got got things moving and started signing more bands and uh, and uh, just i think we were really really lucky uh, with in, in many cases which which led to that Uh, us signing bands like Nightwish or Children of Bodom, and then in early 2000s, uh, um, we had a pretty decent market share in Finland, probably like four or five percent uh, market share, which which meant that uh, normally no, normal world majors get interested, and then in that in this case Universal bought bought the label and boutique label at Universal these days, and uh, I, I I I worked there for another eight years or so and for for last uh for last six years I, i've been uh, doing a new label um uh, uh, i was thrown out of uh, universal for reason or other i just couldn't uh, i didn't get along with the, with the boss of that time and uh, and uh, and for for me one year i thought i will be doing something totally different uh, than music business but, but then i realized that uh, uh, it's the only thing that i can do nobody will i, I will not get a any 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 decent job in any other other industry so uh, and i i thought that i need to uh, i need to start a, a label again just to show uh, people that uh, it 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 was like my my cv it would like for for me it was like way to show that maybe somebody gets interested of my services later and uh, well up until now uh, uh, nobody did i went I went just doing doing a, a label and uh, uh, now now we are starting to get some artists to the level that uh, we are again uh, recognized like uh, like band um, blind channel which with, with whom I, i worked for the last six years uh, got really really good, good reaction at at this year's um, eurovision and now, now they are signed with sony and uh, 
and now there seems to be everybody's interested of the other stuff. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's kind of thing that uh, that uh, people are looking at the rock, rock genre at that uh, because it was everybody was saying like for last ten years that basically rock is dead and uh, yeah. don't don't even try. Which which led like at least locally that I was pretty much alone. Uh, releasing this kind of music, there wasn't that that much. Well, there are fewer, but uh, they not not in a big way. And none of the majors didn't pay any attention um, to, to this kind of music. And uh, now now seems that they all wake up uh, at the at the at the same time and uh, uh, consider that it might be um, a, a trend again. We we don't know whether that will happen or not. But there are certain signs that uh, it it might become a little bit more popular. Of course, that depends on how how the bands. Um, and not just locally, but also internationally. How, how, what kind of music there will be from this genre? And uh, and I always say this goes back and forth anyway. So things, it is like waves, and now it's yeah. like that kind of wave that is um, to me clearly coming. And I've been like last few years saying that uh, this this will eventually happen anyway. But I uh, just don't know how whether it's like a, a year or five years or ten years. So and I was I was prepared to wait, and I um, I could have waited waited a lot longer. And in a, in a way probably would have been better to, to wait a little bit longer so that I could have still uh, got a little bit bigger roster and signed like <laughs> more interesting bands without having a huge bidding war uh, in, in signing those bands yeah. and in de developing them as well because the key uh, with this kind of bands to me is that it's, it's, it's a long term it's, it's not like two or three singles and everything yeah. will happen instantly you need to you need to work for, for uh, few, at least a few years to build mm -hmm. the art to be built their their repertoire and uh, uh, image and everything around it. So because none of those bands tends to be ready uh, with, with the first album, I think uh, that's that's more like practice and then <laughs> then to be then to be ready. But of course you you get the signs at that time. But uh, I think this this genre is um, for only for the pa patient people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense and. Um, I remember when, when was it a couple of months ago now when the Eurovision Song Contest happened and I was in, I was in Texas still and I was in the viral charts just looking for like one of my projects and I was like, what the fuck is Blind Channel doing in the viral charts? Because like I was blissfully unaware of everything that was happening in Europe and then I had to go because like I obviously knew the band from my time at Sony in Finland uh, for the listeners. I did an internship at Sony in Finland before moving to London and I know the guys so I was like, why are they in the UK viral chart? So I had to go on their social media and I was like, oh shit, they were in Eurovision. And um, it's obviously still like a massive global song contest. Um, I think even more so this year because people were all like cooped up inside and like, you know, kind of starving for uh, entertainment. So they landed sixth, I think, which yeah. is pretty damn well. Like Finland has a really shitty background when it comes to Eurovision, apart from one win, which was again with another like rock artist. So um, that's really cool for the guys and I'm really happy that that happened. Uh, and like you said, with the development of guitar music and like band music, I obviously have been seeing it happen for the past couple of years myself. I work at Polydor, which is it's been really interesting because I've seen these like trickles of guitar music go back into the mainstream. So for instance, like me working with Machine Gun Kelly a couple of years ago, people just could not, people in the UK could not wrap their heads around what he was doing. And then last year when he released this massive album to get to my downfall, which became like a huge pop punk sensation, he's bringing the guitar music back and like pretty much start, like restarted it, um, like a scene and it's massive now. Like, it's it's fantastic to see and and having been there to kind of like seen it develop and seen it rise and seen that the streaming numbers are actually massive like the mjk album we were really surprised about how well it did on streaming because traditionally guitar music is not one for streaming it's more of like a physical formats and album formats based uh, genre so i think it's definitely developing and like you said it's it's all cyclical so whether it goes quote unquote back to its glory days, I don't think so because it will have this like new wave of just like the streaming consumption and just like different genres blended in. Even Blind Channel call themselves is it violent pop. So like there's just different. I, I don't even like the idea of thinking that something is going quote unquote back to whatever it used to be, but like it's it needs to evolve to something new. And that's when I'm like super excited to see what will happen now in the next couple of years. 
Yeah, it's evolving. It's evolving with the young young people. Like uh, how how I see what's happening with blind channel is that audience is really really young. Yeah. So it's a uh, uh, it's it's an audience that you don't don't know. They don't have a knowledge of uh, rock history. Yeah. They, they, you 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 can always they, they, that always can say that you should listen to Led Zeppelin and they they still won't like it. So it's yeah. like uh, they will find their own uh, new Led Zeppelin. Yeah. So, so there. I don't know about also. I'm not sure about how the trend will happen, but there is a certain mm -hmm. act that will be uh, will be huge for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. So and then that that might lead uh, for wider. But uh, of course, the consumption has has changed. So I think also how, how is the blind channel doing? It's, it's really mixing with the uh, audience uh, whose musical taste could be really pop or mm. or even like hip. So if uh, it's um, they don't definitely they, they are not going for one genre only yeah so they, 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 it, it, it's more up to the song so the song needs to be really good and uh, totally. then if they then um, that builds a more for uh, uh loyal following as well and mm -hmm. that also um uh, uh, what what you mentioned like uh, when the streaming numbers go go really well so they tend to uh, have a very long tail uh which yeah. means and also that that also that, that's that's my whole business philosophy with this band is that we have released now now three albums and we got a good streaming numbers for one song but also really really uh, uh, good numbers for the rest of the catalog because there's awful lot of people who want to listen to all of it so so I think uh, uh, that 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 because now now the band is gone gone from me but basic and I, I'm probably one of the few people who who negotiates um, the band's leaving a label uh, because I was <laughs> I was very much in, in, involved with their their deal with uh, Sony because I wanted uh, them to get a, a place that can take them to that uh, yeah. really big level because I knew that I knew I knew my limitations here mm -hmm. uh, in Finland and I, I know limitations of, of any label in Finland that uh, that uh, who, who can do this job uh, on, on a worldwide basis so so we need to you mentioned Alma earlier it's also she she left uh, uh, Finland uh, out, uh, to outside to find uh, her deals uh, elsewhere because they, mm -hmm. they would have not been anyone in Finland uh, to do the job uh, internationally. And yeah. uh, we have we always been pretty lucky with our connections to German labels. Like I, I think Alma, Alma did uh, Universal German, yeah. Germany, Germany, yeah. uh, and uh, Universal Germany has been a, a link to so many uh, Finnish acts during the years. And uh, and uh, at least uh, what they do there is like. Uh, they are keen to check what's happening here, and that's all, yeah. all we need. Uh, that's all we need. We need a, 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 some person to check uh, what what is a talent level in this country, and then we we need that kind of um, bigger country to, to, to lead in the job because yeah. uh, none none of us. I was saying to Blind Channel for years that that um, uh, it's okay uh, if if you if you leave us, but don't don't go to any Finnish majors. <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> I knew that, I knew that it didn't have happened to so many bands before yeah. that it's it's, it's a end of the road basically, and then after after time they are asked uh, to change the language to Finnish because of course in Finland yeah, yeah. a lot of the stuff in, works really a lot better in, in Finnish so mm. it's very common that if somebody tries maybe maybe one or two albums in in English and then they are asked, asked to change the the, the lyrics and uh, that's 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 really tough for some bands yeah. and uh, I understand because. If they have a passion to do their their music in English, so mm -hmm. it's it's up. But, uh, but even even I know that my channel was, uh, of course, they were shopping their their project during the years, and I think they were already uh, asked to change the, the change the language uh, already mm -hmm. a lot. And uh, and um, I I I've, I've been uh, stubborn to uh, to four years to work, and and also now my roster is. Uh, there's only one artist that is in, in Finnish and uh, mm. basically uh, basically okay, okay other, other labels have left the space for for me to operate because they don't they are not keen on on this but at least so far so mm. but that that's how it goes yeah that's super interesting so your job has a lot to do with export and I'd love to, love to get in on this a little bit more because whether you're a band whether you're an artist from you know Finland or any other country that doesn't necessarily is in the UK or the US where the blueprint to success is much more defined and there's a lot more companies, people, managers who just know how to do that job. So for all of the more minor regions out there, um, let's talk about that a little bit because obviously before you and I jumped on this call, you even asked me like, how, how did I get to like Universal in London? And I just said, I, I just left. <laughs> so it's like part, I think it's a, 
it's a job that takes part just like embarking on this fool's journey of just like I don't know what will happen but I'll just never find out unless I do it so having the courage to kind of like jump into the unknown but then also what are the other aspects in that that you've seen in your past and working with artists internationally that are helpful in getting to that international success? I don't know if that's a good question. Yeah, but... I, it, uh, I think in, in Finland, uh, I, I think it uh, applies to many smaller countries. Like uh, yeah. you normally have a easier uh, route in the beginning because your local competition is not that uh, uh, terribly uh, fierce. Yeah. So, but then, then the barriers comes. <laughs> so, so at, at some point, but like I, I can see like, let, let's say like uh, in the US, I, I see, Really good, good bands, good, good music that don't don't stream at all. And I'm a, sometimes, sometimes I'm really surprised. Like this band should be in, in Finland. They would they would in the beginning of their career have a better chance uh, to start the project uh, in a in a in an environment where where the competition is not not as 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 bad as it, as it is in LA or mm. in, in New York. But then when things start to happen and when you have the uh, people behind you, when you when you have the right managers, you have uh, labels and you have uh, financing. So so yeah. so then 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 that's that's where we just cannot match. So my my idea is to build a band uh, to a level and then lead them to the to the next level. And uh, mm. and uh, I think this is uh, this is a chance that we can. I think in a many many smaller countries and also uh, in any case we always need to build a band uh, to some level locally because when I, I when I see people because when I see people out. Uh, uh, elsewhere, they always ask, like, how is this doing in your home country? Yeah, and exactly. That's what I've learned that it's, it's not the right place to lie. <laughs> you just yeah. have to <laughs> money. And, and it's it's not very good selling uh, if you if you need to say that it's not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you need to be able to show that you have you don't have to have a top chart position on anything like that but you need to be able to show that people are coming to your shows and things mm -hmm. like that you need to, it, it can be like minor signs but you need to be able to show some some signs and then being uh, honest in telling like what's what's actually because uh, I, I i've been like uh, let's let's say 20 25 years ago i i came to this uh, question so many times and then I was started like uh, <laughs> trying to get an explanation and yeah, yeah. Then, I, then I started thinking I'm really stupid how do I look like trying to to convince those people at the same time when I'm like not able to say uh, one proper word and then I thought <laughs> okay I just need to tell and then if I don't really have uh, any story why I am even trying to sell this uh, yeah. stuff to anybody because they have a uh, and they have loads of stuff available. So why, why would why, why would they be interested in an artist that has nothing happening uh, in in uh, at home? So so therefore that's what I always I, I always I still very often see young bands that they said like oh no this is not this is not for Finland this is for international market. But but if you're able to uh, practice your your art uh, somewhere like uh, mm -hmm. why why would anybody take it? So yeah. I think that's the key to build something locally uh, and and then start. And also what I seen even with some bands from, from my nowadays, because they might get like a, a comment from my uh, Instagram from like Chile and they'll come to come to play here. And of course, the next day they would like to travel to Chile to play one show. <laughs> and like, it's, uh, it's easy to write uh, on social media that yeah. come to play here. And, uh, we love you here. And then you, you might be like fooled. Of, of thinking like that you actually have a following there <laughs> and, uh, and why try to conquer something which is really far really expensive uh, when you have still a lot of work to do uh, in, a, in a country is way a, a lot closer closer mm -hmm. to you so to me it's like uh, there's always willingness to do this kind of tourism uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, but for, for labels or any it, it doesn't, doesn't doesn't make any sense yeah. So, so, but but uh, but it, it, it to some level in the smaller countries, I think it is e easier. It, it is easier in the beginning. It it gets way harder very quickly then. <laughs> and, yeah. and then you need a partner. Yeah. Then you need to have a plan uh, how how to um, make those uh, next steps. And then you also need to know uh, the, the level of competition. To me, like for example, if I well, I don't know when I'm able to go to South by Southwest next mm -hmm. time, but I always said like to me, like going to South by Southwest is, is it's a place where I, I save a lot of money just by going there and seeing mm -hmm. the level of competition that uh, mm -hmm. there is internationally. I always see so many exciting artists from all over the world and I'm like, okay, this is the level of competition. This yeah. is the this is where I have to be in order to be here. Otherwise, it's just a waste of money. So, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's very often like uh, South by is a place where if uh, after visit I know that okay, 
this this one this band will wait one another year we need to build it's not ready to go for uh, so so therefore like uh, um, instead of starting to spend on a promo that will not lead to anything or sending a band to to play a, a support shows for um pretty pretty uh, ex expensive uh, mm. uh, costs like uh in like coming back and not making any change uh, so it's uh, because of oh uh, that, that's what happened to me with spine farm we are we live in a bubble and, and i very mm. often uh, spend money on, on a new artist and then i later know that okay we should have waited because then yeah. when we really should have done some something we have we already was was so much in the red that I, I couldn't put any more money into that project. And, uh, and mm. it, it was like uh, not very beneficial for artists either to go there to support first album and things are not in the right place. And then when the second album comes and, and, and the project is so heavily in red that I'm, I'm not able to do those investments anymore or, mm. or, or then they are done in a, in a small scale. And then the money was just spent in a, at, at wrong time. But uh, yeah. this is a difficult part of this business to, to know when 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 you're when you're ready it's uh yeah. because every time when you're excited about one of your artists like uh, that's uh and it's maybe supposed to be like that that you you really need to be excited as well and yeah. uh, and then you just don't follow all the signs okay nowadays there's a lot of data that helps uh, uh, yeah. making those decisions but uh, at the end of the day to me it's always a gut feeling anyway mm, that's interesting so you mentioned honesty earlier and honesty in like business conversations. And obviously everybody knows like the industry st standard sometimes is a bit of bullshit. Like everyone talks the talk and then some people also walk the walk. But I think especially coming from Finland, Finnish people are usually very blunt, very no bullshit type of thing. And I certainly got into a bit of trouble when I first came to UK and just the first job that I had, I remember just writing an email to one of my work colleagues who was in the office and she had said to somebody that the new girl is so rude. And I was like, how am I rude? Like, what have I done? And it's because I didn't put like in, in the UK, you put like a little kiss, like a little X at the end of fucking every email. And because I didn't put the X to make sure that she knew that I was you know, kind of like using a smiley face in an email. And to me, that was just like unprofessional. But now I'm super conditioned to fucking put an X in, in like every one of my things. And that's such like me participating into the industry bullshit in a way. And so how would you dance the fine line between telling the truth to somebody who maybe needs to do a little bit more work on themselves and then also be encouraging uh, but also, so my question was, how do you deliver messages to somebody without the industry bullshit, um, but also without being super like rude and ruthless? Like, how do you dance that fine line? Uh, to me, it's very much like uh, how, how well I know those people. Yeah. So, so the, the better I know the people, I, I just don't, I stop pretending like uh, whether they like the style or not, like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't, to be honest, I don't care because I just like, uh, I just like uh, hate being fake. And, yeah. uh, and uh, this is uh, something that e there is too much in the business. I think uh, we, by being honest, we just save a lot of time. My, my, my first, first experience was like, uh, uh, just when I was like maybe first time at like new, new music seminar, like, uh, over 30 years ago and I, then I, I'm meeting people and like yeah I like your music a lot or some stuff like that I'm, I come home I'm really excited now it, this is so easy oh everything will happen instantly and then you don't, you don't hear any anything from those people <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and like uh, uh, to me it was like a learning process like because as a Finn you thought like uh, of course if, if somebody says that they, they they love your stuff that they actually mean it but uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I think to me like when I, I I work really a lot with the young artists, and I think for me it's very uh, important to be really, really honest with them. I uh, that, uh, to tell my true opinion. If I don't like something, I will just say it. They don't, they don't need it to change their style because of me. But uh, at at least uh, they are known. And I always say that I, I'm I'm really honest to people who know I know are so talented that it will not affect them. I'm I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not like if, if if so so so. They they can take that. They can take what they what they want from it, and then they can also ignore it if they want it. The, the, my style of art a is that uh, that uh, I tend to say my opinions, and then like let's let's talk about this tomorrow. And if artists 
still haven't changed their minds, or then I normally stop. So I don't, I don't, I don't like uh, uh, because I, I'm not artist myself. I'm, I'm not trying to be an artist. So I, I just mm -hmm. give my op uh, ideas and opinions, and then I, I let them, I let that uh, sink in. And uh, if, if they still, uh, you, you earlier mentioned like this violent pop thing from uh, Blind Channel, and from day one I hated that term a lot. <laughs> I totally disliked it and I said it to so many times and they just didn't care they just go, went on used it and now it maybe starts to work uh, as, as, in, in a benefit of them yeah. and the thing is how I see when when artist has a strong vision about what they are doing uh, and uh, they, they they will know better at the end of the day anyway and if mm. an artist uh, don't have vision they will never make it anyway. So those mm. those 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 ones that, that really become successful, they are they are true geniuses. They they know those things so well. I think we need to just like give them some idea, some food for thought, for them to think about some small smaller minor details uh, uh, to to uh, to maybe uh, develop those rough edges or something like. But but mm. at the end of the day, it's artists and they need to be able to uh, deliver. Uh, and uh, and sometimes, as as in this case, it was like a, I, I didn't like that, but uh, but it ended up being uh, good anyway. And. Uh, uh, didn't at least it didn't harm the band and now at least they are doing something which they feel is totally themselves they, exactly. they, they love yeah. they, they, they love it themselves and that's 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 all that is needed they are truly behind the story uh, uh in, in that and that's that's the key and uh, mm -hmm. instead of like me trying to put something that they don't feel comfortable at all uh, and yeah. uh, this is also like in in this business i think uh, uh very often uh, the people in the industry have uh, two big egos, yeah. uh, so, so so they I, I I sometimes feel some people like they they in, in the industry side they want they would like to be artists themselves and they just didn't make it and uh, and then they don't give enough room for artists to to build their own career because I think we are we are we are helping uh, we are we are uh, assistants in in this yeah. uh, uh, in this journey not 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 the not the key personnel. And, yeah, one a piece and, uh, of the pie, uh, so to speak. Yeah, yes, and uh, and uh, we are important part, but uh, but we are we are we are not the, the main stars in the show anyway. Yeah. So but so so therefore, like uh, it's kind of the certain things in the industry that, uh, um, of course, I think in any industry there are things that annoys people, and uh, and uh, for me also it's a. Uh, an unwelcoming of any new people to be to business side um, to industry. That's uh, that's uh, that's annoying thing uh, um, because uh, okay, we are we are all guys who are afraid of somebody taking our job. Basically, that's 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 what, that's what it is largely about. And we want to save our job. We want to, uh, to kill a newcomer as quickly as possible because we we see them as as a threat to our our uh, positions and. Uh, Maybe it's just natural, but uh, I still hate it. Because, but like, I, what I what I'm doing at the moment, I, I've been saying for years that uh, uh, I I know the science. I know uh, when if I if I just need to go away because if if I see somebody is doing the same things, uh, I just cannot cannot build an artist anymore. Uh, other people are getting the best talent, uh, and uh, then then I just, just then I just know okay, that's it. <laughs> I need to do something else, and that's what I've been waiting. And I, I would be. Oh, well, maybe I would be a bit sad if that happens, but I, I probably would take it also as a, as a natural because I'm not uh, expecting to uh, to work forever anyway. And uh, and thing is, uh, okay, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm I'm lucky because I've I've sold company once and I I, I still would have food on table if if that would happen. So mm. I'm, 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 I'm so so maybe can have a different position than somebody else. But but uh, then then again, I, I would be just happy seeing a new new. Uh, uh, young, uh, fresh faces to the business because that's what we need. Our, our, at least in Finland, this is getting older and older. We have seen uh, all all the boards that I'm I'm in. Uh, it's like really old people. <laughs> it's like we need to have new. But it's it's really tough to like let's say like they're starting a label at the, at, at the moment. Like I always said, you need to have a dad with really really deep pockets uh, uh, mm. to to finance uh, because it takes years yeah. and years to build a label uh, to to any meaningful position and. Uh, you need to have a vision, knowledge, and uh, finances. And uh, and I, I was really lucky in the nineties when I started. It was so much easier. I just I just at the moment, if I would be starting now, 
um, no, it, it would, wouldn't be possible. Uh, okay. So I don't, I don't, so it's, I, but I, that's, that's something I, I don't know how it could be done. We need to figure out at some point because just for, for uh, publics, for customers' sake and uh, industry's sake, if it's just three majors and then a few bigger yeah. indies and then nothing uh, except like self-financed hobby project uh, on, on Spotify. We need to something in between as well, just for uh, to have a large variety uh, uh, in the music, because obviously yeah. Major's idea is not to service everybody with uh, everything. We, we need those, those smaller labels to fill those gaps and uh, and uh, it's such, such difficult to get into the industry at the moment that uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a bit worried mm. <laughs> for the future. What I see happen quite a bit now is that maybe there's not like an influx of new labels forming, but what other artists might do, they might be signed to a major label, but they themselves kind of like lead a some sort of movement within music. So they start their own label imprint and then that major may give them quite the free reign to run that label and sign that label, like sign artists and, and run it as they see fit because they see that like there's something happening. So I feel like there's there's a at least an attempt from major labels side to breathe into the culture aspect as well, because I've had a couple of people ask me, um, it's been tough obviously with, with COVID and bringing most of my repertoire is based out of the U S. So some of the U S people are asking me like, what does it take right now for U S act to make it in the UK? Like, what can we do more? And there's been a clear division between artists who are, somehow doing something really, really cool. So whether it's like popping off on TikTok or uh, just like leading some sort of cultural movement um, in the absence of touring and having the artists in the market, because obviously that's like another talking point that we can use in the UK when the band is here, then we can bring people to watch them and then um, it, it feels more relevant. But if that touring kind of like traditional artist isn't doing something culturally significant at the time, they've been it's been tough not gonna lie so I feel like there's if if there's an artist who just somehow gets into a scene and is able to champion that scene or be associated with that scene I'm just going to use pop punk or um there's a big movement right now happening from the U.S. which I think is going to be massive in the next two years which is like hyper pop um so artists like Eric DOA uh, Pink Panthers she's based out of the UK People who are like in a very DIY way, making like TikTok y, uh, but also very quality pop, but there's a significant different sound to it. It's kind of like, well, hyper. That's, that's why it's called hyper pop. Um, so I, there's an intrigue there because it's like culturally significant. And I don't think that majors are, um, majors are kind of like giving these artists a lot more free reign because they see that whatever it's happening it's working like we don't fucking know like <laughs> so that that to me feels super exciting um just as a caveat um those yeah. i think those people the, the the next step is like because they have something interesting happening mm -hmm. very often mm -hmm. those people they do this one thing and then they disappear like yeah. uh, you know, when they, when you when you have this chance then you should like be trying to uh, take it to the to the next uh, maybe movement or next project because you, you already have uh, gained uh, so much knowledge about the business you are in a very better position uh, uh, to me it feels like very often these these people they they come and they go and then yeah. you don't hear from them anymore because it's, yeah. a, it's a great opportunity to to use the, the, the experience and knowledge from because in in this in this industry anyway the the things very often work works similar way it's 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 not very complicated and uh, once once you get it like you, you can use it for other kind of music as well yeah. when when your heart you need you need heart you need you need you need to believe you need to like what you're doing and that's mm -hmm. that's the key and then the, the the practical side is very often quite similar like okay mm -hmm. they are different different you need different contests like you need, need to have different places to market and different places okay. to advertise but uh, but then uh, at the end of the day it's uh, I always said that this is this super uh, simple business made very uh, complicated. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think, think people want to make it very complicated when it actually it is super simple. You just need like one great track and then things are with, 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 with the average uh, music. It's really tough because, because nobody's interested. You need to do all the tricks you can do and still you're not making much of the difference. Uh, mm. But then when you have a, Good rack, it thinks becomes a lot easier. So it's a, 
it's it's strange and it's fascinating for me like uh, being here for over 30 years and it's still like uh, uh it, it, it's fun to be excited about uh, this simple business after so long time yeah that's what i would definitely say about people who work in music and have like a long-term career in music because let's face it a lot of professionals as well they may be like okay so i championed this one artist and it kind of didn't grow from there or like we had one hit single or two hit singles and nothing really happened after that so they can be a bit of a burnout unless you have a true kind of like weird love hate passion relationship with the industry that i feel like definitely you and i share there's a lot of just laughing about the industry but from the inside which is obviously one of the reasons why i started this podcast i'm like well guys this is what fucking ridiculous whatever we're doing but i also love it so it's like having having the humor to kind of have that sort of point of view and it's not always that serious even though it is at the same time because we're, we're talking about people's you know livelihoods and and everything but you have to have a sense of humor in it and um what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So what you said earlier about some artists who just like kind of go away, that's what I find is like a pivotal pivotal point. So if you find that you're popping off on, again, TikTok is such a point and example right now. If you have like one hit hit song or you're at the place of like, oh, shit, we're going up. So the key there is to start seeing the artist as an artist proposition, as opposed to just like, I put out a song and it's doing really, really well. And like artist development, that's what takes a lot of time. It doesn't matter what genre it is, but like having an artist proposition that really takes time. So for anyone who's at that place or wants to get to that place, just know that it's not a short game, even though you may have some quick win wins along the way, or you may have some quick losses in, along the way. This is really an industry for tenacious people who are like willing to stick in it for the long run and willing to really see the big picture as well in their whatever they're doing. Oh, of course, yeah. My, my all time favorite band is Pink Floyd and I always try to. <laughs> I always try to think about like how how, how <laughs> it's always my kind of ideal for any project like uh, to build something that it has a meaning and how how nicely it's put together. Mm. Actually, I don't know how it's actually put together, but it looks outside that it's put everything yeah. is perfect. Probably it wasn't, but uh, but it it looks so great and and then <laughs> the outcome is fantastic. And uh, and today it's like uh, from uh, my earliest actually actually. Uh, uh, just reminded today that um, uh, Night Nightwish uh, was formed exactly 25 years ago today. So yeah. wow, to, to, <laughs> to have uh, to have that kind of careers that last for uh, for for a long time that that's yeah. always a, a dream. Like that's that was always the idea when starting a project. Of course, it doesn't happen or, uh, often uh, or. Uh, always but but that's that's all anyway that that's always idea when i start a new project i want to see the same them going for 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 decades and uh, and build a career that have as a as a meaning for for yeah. audience uh, uh for a long time because that's that's what uh, what music is all about to, to me and uh, and that's the only only way that i can i can think about it so and, yeah. and of course Pink Floyd is a good idea because it's something unreachable. It's something uh, so spectacular that I know that yeah. I, I have, I will never have a, any chance of getting even uh, close. But uh, but uh, at least there's always something to dream about. Yeah, Nightwish is an interesting one because well, I don't know if you knew, but Daria, the first singer, she's my second cousin. So like we're not close or anything. But I always grew up thinking that so. For listeners who don't know, Nightwish is really one of the biggest bands that ever came out of Finland and they've played like Wembley multiple times. They're still having a thriving career. And um, they were kind of like, if you haven't listened to them, they're kind of like the original Evanescence. So like female fronted uh, kind of gothy, rocky vibe that, and they have a crazy global fan base, like really, really just big fan base. And I still get like people from like Brazil or Chile or wherever, just like drop me at Instagram, like DM, like, are you related to Tari? I'm like, oh God, are we still doing this? <laughs> you know. So it, it really transcends a lot of time and space still to this day, which is interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they are not the biggest and they are not the winners of the streaming world, but their yeah. their fan base is super loyal. So, yeah. so I think, I think they recently had a, had a live stream, which had like, 200,000 people watching it and actually paying for it. So actually right. the new streaming became 
uh, enormous business for them as well. Mm. So uh, just just because they have that kind of fan base that uh, that wants to take everything out of that band, and yeah. when there's some that kind of special happening, and also especially now at the time when when the band is not able to tour, so they are mm-hmm. they, they they are a huge and yeah, Tarja played a, a a big part in 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 the beginning before they had their internal things with <laughs> very often happens with the, with, the, with any bands, and I think even well. Pink Floyd had the same before. Yeah. <laughs> so it, ha- it happens with so many bands, and they they still can thrive and continue, yeah. and maybe sometimes create uh, two great careers. So it's like, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's kind of a marriage kind of relationship being in a band. So it's understandable that sometimes because you are so close of each yeah. other for years and years and years. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it, it can be uh, tough and. Uh, and then the people have a different visions uh, about mm-hmm. how to how to go for, forward. So it's a uh, just natural. Uh, to me, it's always sad to see when the band totally split up and they don't just disappear because yeah. uh, then there is no legacy. And uh, the, it's all yeah. about it's it's very much about the legacy to me. Like how 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 you want to be seen. Like not 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 in a, in a financial statement, but how, what people think mm-hmm. about. Uh, your art in in the long run because mm. uh, that's i think for what what many artists want to be remembered of course they also they want to make a living they want to make that they, they take the food to the table but then very soon after for most comes to how how, how they will be remembered uh, later and uh, mm. that's really important part and uh, yeah night, night with will be remembered and that's yeah. uh, well in a way that's a kind of dream, dream uh, for me to, to be uh, in a in a that kind of project uh, which has a meaning for for so long time. Yeah, I'm happy. To, I, I I when when we used, still used to travel, I, I saw them very often at the airport, and I was like really happy seeing them traveling to some part of the world to to perform. So it's uh, I, mm. I hope that time comes back and they can take they can take their music to the, uh, all the corners of the world and uh, and find that the, the band that that the band always they they all still also find a new audience all the time. Because mm. uh, that you you won't f- find them on a on a on a uh, top forty uh, yeah. charge or radio. Or so. You need to you need to be more active to find them. That's like a, I think their audience could be a lot bigger if people just would know about them. So yeah, yeah. Even if they are reasonably one of the biggest bands ever to come from this country, so it's it's still they have still potential to to to, to become uh, even bigger. But yeah, it's it's fun to see. Yeah, and I think for that legacy part is such a cool example of what more artists should really be thinking earlier on like even though you should be more focused on what you're doing presently also just like keep integrity in whatever you're doing just it was a beautiful example what you said earlier about blind channel really sticking to their violent pop image because they know like that's going to be their legacy and that's how people are going to remember them uh, whether they become like a global sensation or not like people who do remember them it's what's gonna you know um make them memorable to them and just like having integrity in your artistic vision and I would also say for people who work in the industry like I had a massive like crisis of (laughs) self last year (laughs) with COVID I was like what is my legacy what am I doing oh my god like I want to leave a mark in the industry that's very distinctive and authentic to me and it's led me to make a lot of decisions that don't necessarily make sense to a lot of people in the industry and I'm going to talk about them more in the near future and not going there just yet but my thing has been okay what is my where is my integrity what what do I want to contribute to this to this industry that I feel like I see through like the matrix I feel like I see the industry and all the bullshit and all the things that we just accept as oh it's just showbiz and I'm like fuck off like no it doesn't have to be like that if it's just everyone complaining about same things why do we still accept those same things and it can be as simple as just like lying to artists for about their music like it can be as simple as that um so just food for thought for everyone who works in music whether you're an artist or um you know an executive or whatever just like what is going to be your legacy yeah that's that's why we talk about these things yeah exactly (laughs) and that's why one of the reasons why i started a podcast because you know (laughs) yeah these things yeah, it's it's good. I think it's really really good, and it's really important, uh, especially this time when we, uh, we we don't go to conferences, we don't meet the people. So I think yeah. uh, we need to find uh, these ideas elsewhere. 
So for yeah. me, the, 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 the tough part of COVID was that I was not able to see anybody. I, I, I got really fed up with these Zooms and Teams and yeah. Meets and all this stuff. Like I just wanted to meet people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because that's, that's the, because like when I, when I largely work uh, on, on own, I, uh, that, that, that's what I was missing from the times at, at the major, that when I can have this uh, uh, random, uh, lunch or uh, yeah. coffee yeah. with somebody and then talk about something and then suddenly I have an idea of something totally different. And, exactly. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is what I'm missing uh, currently because uh, especially with COVID time because I, I don't get this kind of uh, uh, random talks I don't have uh, necessarily they don't, they don't, there's no any idea because then there's these general meet, meetings where, where you are just uh, doing you know what, in the yeah. beginning what, what you are about to do and uh, and then then you end up and then there's nothing extra just that and, uh, and of course that is important as well but then mm -hmm. uh, the key is to to get those new ideas and uh, try to like uh, uh, be fresh because otherwise we tend to start going our, our brains work like uh, the brains are the, done to for us to work to be really lazy to do exactly <laughs> the same way every time and yeah. uh, and in the long run it doesn't work uh, yeah. we need those ideas and as, as in the label we always need to be uh, uh, ahead of the curve rather, rather than behind always mm. so that it's our only chance of surviving is 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 uh, trying to be to be early in in places yeah. where the bigger labels are not yet otherwise if we are always a little bit late we are always second best so it's yeah. uh, it's the, it's, it's not going to do really well. Mm. It's ever nice to know about your relationship with Tarja. So it's, it's, that, that, that helps about Finland, how small the country is. Oh my God, absolutely. It's crazy. Like when you think about it, it's only 5.5 million people. Like that's, there's more people in London. So when you think about it, that's another like strength, just like going back into if you're from a smaller country, it doesn't have to be Finland, but like can be. Um, if you're from a smaller country, it's surprisingly easy to just like meet the people in the industry. And if you just like keep going to the gigs, you keep um, following relevant people on LinkedIn and social media and kind of like you, you see the map of the people much easier. So for instance, when I worked at Sony, it was about 50, 60 people who works at the entire label in print of Sony. And then in here in, in London, like in entire Polydor, just one imprint within Universal is the same amount of people. So it's just a lot more here. Um, I'm just saying, which is going to be a major, um, like something that's going to help you if you're from a more, smaller place because it's easier to kind of navigate. A lot easier. You are you, you are at King's Cross. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been to the new offices so. well, since they left Kensington. So. Yeah. <laughs> this was really really small. Yeah, I mean, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, yeah, it is. That, that's true. That's true. In, fin in Finland, like you're always like um, two people uh, to to somebody else. Like yeah. you always, you always know somebody who knows the next one, and that's that's the one that you try to uh, connect with. So it's it's really really easy. Uh, totally. Uh, in in the US or UK, maybe Germany as well. It's uh, uh, it could be uh, uh, way more. Tough, mm -hmm. especially in the US, not, uh, way more tough. Yeah. You need to know uh, certain people, and and then you. Uh, Three, you are always like three people away from that person you try to uh, link as and of course it's more complicated to get that uh, uh, connect uh, as well at that time so it's a uh, yeah we, we in, in a certain things we we have it easier in the smaller countries but then our yeah. our our limits comes very quickly as well so there's yeah. there's two sides to everything yeah well this has been a wonderful chat i feel like our time is just coming up but thank you so much for coming on board and like obviously from like somebody from finnish industry i've known about you since forever so it's just very fun to have this conversation and just be like um realizing that oh shit i made it too like fuck <laughs> you know? um yeah, you, i don't know yeah, it's good to like ah, yeah. it's a dream it's a dream yeah. no it's not <laughs> yeah, exactly well thank you so so much <laughs> thank you for listening to break the record podcast i hope you enjoyed this episode as much as i did now more than ever is the time to make a positive change in the music industry so if you would like to support this message you can leave a podcast review on itunes or take a screenshot and tag the anna turnen on instagram stories i'd love to share the love of my stories also for comments and questions you can dm me Stay tuned for an all-new episode next week.